Hey, how you doing? Welcome back to Film Trip. On today's episode, we will be talking about our top 10 weapons on Forged in Fire. But before we continue on, if you're a fan of Forged in Fire, make sure to hit that like button. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay updated whenever we upload. And if you're a new subscriber, let us know by commenting down below and we will feature you in a later video. With all that out of the way, let's hop straight into the video. Number 10, the Hunga Munga. One of the strangest shaped weapons on the show, the Hunga Munga is a hybrid between a sword, boomerang, chakram, and a battle axe that originated in Central Africa. According to the two finalists, Jared Williams and Eric Leong, the Hunga Munga was challenging to make due to its unique shape and needing four points instead of one. The special crescent tip helps to hook and gut whatever the target is, certifying that this is one weapon that will kill. Number 9. The Tabar With origins from Persia, India, and Armenia, the Tabar is a traditional battle axe entirely made out of steel. While an all-steel weapon can definitely be an advantage on the battlefield, it caused some construction challenges for the forgers. Ultimately, winner Ted Thompson was able to make an axe head out of an 8-pound sledgehammer head, admitting that he wanted to chop a car in half with his Tabar. During the strength test, his Tabar left a strong crease in the shield, Yet the axe maintained its straightness, showcasing the advantages of the all-steel construction of the Tabar. Number 8. Washington's Kalishmar The Kalishmar, a popular dueling sword, became an iconic presidential weapon thanks to its role as George Washington's favorite, and it's not hard to see why. The Kalishmar featured a trifoil blade design that tapers to a precise point, allowing for thrusting and stabbing in attacks. The extremely broad fork gives the blade ample strength, all while featuring intricate and beautiful elements, such as a perforated and decorated oval guard and pommel. Contestant Josh forged his Kalishmar out of a 5160 in mild steel, while also improvising a rifle barrel for the pommel. Josh managed to maintain the beauty and intricacy of the Kalishmar, all while also ensuring that his blade was sharp enough to kill, resulting in a weapon that even George Washington would be proud of. Number 7. The Bardiche In what was described by host Will Willis as one of the most difficult challenges on Forged in Fire, the contestants were tasked to make an Eastern European Bardiche. The Bardiche features a large, crescent-shaped axe head that measures nearly 2 feet and was perforated with small holes, making it lighter and easier to cleave through flesh and blood. It was a multi-purpose weapon, as infantry soldiers would balance their muskets on the Bardiche's pole when firing from a distance and then use the axe during melee combat. Contestant John forged his blade out of a 5160, featuring a hickory handle and brass pins. He added a touch of beauty to his blade by hand drawing a dragon design, turning his weapon into one big piece of art as well. This weapon epitomized the saying, beautiful but deadly, since it easily cut through a pig carcass, prompting Doug Markaita's iconic saying, it will kill. Number 6. Roman Gladius the Roman Gladius was the primary weapon of the Roman Legionnaire. For more than a thousand years, it was the weapon which dominated the Roman battlefields. The two finalists, Jamie Lundell and Mareko Muamasi, were charged with creating their own version of the blade. Jamie, a full-time bladesmith with 15 years of experience, set out to produce the most beautiful blade possible, featuring Damascus steel. He hand-carved the hilt and engraved it with the words, Fortune favors the bold in Latin. He used olive wood as part of the handle components, which added a historic authentic quality to his sword. Mareko, a full-time bladesmith with five years experience, created a stunning sword with strong lines and a sturdy geometric handle. He incorporated 675 layers of steel during the forging process. Both forged weapons were tested on ballistic dummies dressed in Roman gladiator garb and helmets. Both weapons passed the cut and kill test, but ultimately, Jamie's weapon proved to be the better of the two and he won the competition. David Baker even told Jamie that his Roman Gladius was one of the most beautiful forged he had ever seen. Number 5. Crusader Sword This episode featured Peter Swarsbert and David Roeder in the final combat. They were tasked with forging a Crusader Sword, typical of the Middle Ages, 
and intended primarily for use from horseback. The sword was a very long 28 to 31 inch blade with double edges and a hilt. Peter, with 22 years of experience and a full-time blacksmith, forged a heavy sword which easily passed Markaida's kill test. Day forged 51-060 steel and created a walnut handle with deerskin hide. Markaida described it as having beautiful thrusting capability. The two blades were tested by a rider on horseback with the horse at full gallop. A ballistic dummy cloth in medieval garb and cloth armor was the target for both swords, which ultimately proved that they were both sharp for thrusting and cutting. Both weapons were tested for strength in a mechanical device. Ultimately, Peter's sword won the competition due to its superior performance and artistic construction. Number 4. Reuse Viking Battle Axe In Season 1, Episode 3, the final two challengers were asked to make a traditional Viking battle axe. Originating from Scandinavia, the battle axe was often made with a lot of bulky multi-layered steel, helping to make it sturdy. Ultimately, it was Ryu Lin who rose to the top of the challengers with his version of the Viking battle axe. His win was all the more surprising because Ryu's home forge was made almost entirely of makeshift tools and equipment he made himself. In fact, one piece of equipment required cooling with a hair dryer which Ryu held by hand. Ryu's spirit of stubborn determination to craft the best possible weapon, regardless of the difficulty, led him to create one fierce weapon, capable of splitting skulls despite admittedly not being the nicest looking weapon. Number 3. David's Qatar David Goldberg, a full-time bladesmith with 20 years of experience, won this challenge. He drew on his extensive training in and knowledge of Japanese philosophy to create a beautiful two-bladed push dagger known as the Qatar. Throughout the challenge, David used his ability to focus on the task at hand and was complimented on his practice of putting forth the best effort to result in the highest achievement possible. David's weapon featured a beautiful blade with swirls in the metal and a handsome hilt. It cut cleanly through two pieces of metal and successfully passed every test required as the judges used it to disembowel and efficiently execute the required kill cuts, proving that this is one beautiful but deadly weapon. Number 2. Mace's Moro Chris the Morocris is a formidable weapon designed primarily for slicing and chopping. The ancient double-edged sword originated from East Java, but was and continues to be used widely throughout Southeast Asia. The blade is weighted, meant to create a wider wound during combat in order to cause the victim to quickly bleed to death. In one episode, contestants Mace and Murray were tasked with making their own versions of the Morocris, with Mace creating an astonishingly beautiful weapon inspired by the Spirit of the Tiger. He added stripes and a tiger tooth, filed some handsome edges on his blade, creating a stunning handle, and forged his Moro Chris entirely by hand. He developed the beautiful blade design using 23 layers of steel, all forged by hand. Mace's magnificent blade ultimately won this episode of the competition. Number 1. Brandon's Grim Reaper Scythe. In a special themed episode, the top two contestants were tasked with recreating a bubonic era tool turned weapon, the Grim Reaper Scythe. While the scythe was originally meant to be used as a farm instrument to reap large amounts of crops, it is fitting that it soon became synonymous with death, since he is a, since he is the Reaper of Souls. Rebellious peasants commonly use their scythes as deadly weapons, leading to the pop culture adaption of the farm tool as a murder machine. The contestants had to forge a scythe with a 24 to 26 inch blade, a shaft of 70 to 73 inches, and two handles. Contestant Brandon Scythe stood out for its incredible strength and craftsmanship. He constructed his blade out of a premium 1080 steel, made the shaft out of a spiral shaped maple wood, and constructed his handles with mortise and tion joints to make them quote, strong as hell. Ultimately, his dedication to strength paid off as he walked away $10,000 richer. Hey, you made it to the end. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or are just a fan of Forged in Fire, drop a like. Also, comment down below which weapon was your favorite. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe. What are you doing? And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you stay updated whenever we upload. From all of us at Film Trip, 
We hope you have a great one. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.